Hey everybody and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks. I'm Zelda Master and in this episode, we're going to be taking on the Take 'em All mini game. Uh, this is going to be the final round and that is the red door. It's definitely going to be the most difficult. It's actually like a crazy boss gauntlet because we're going to be taking on all five bosses from all of the five temples as well as a bunch of enemies in different rooms. So this is going to be super hectic. Before we do enter this, I highly recommend if you're going to take this on to at least have two potions. I mean, that's the most you can have. So make sure you have potions and the best potions to carry with you are the purple ones because if you do die, Link will automatically drink them. So they work like a fairy, uh, kind of like other Zelda games. That's kind of how the fairy works when you fall. Uh, the fairy heals you instead. In this game, since there are no fairies, this uh, purple potion will automatically uh, activate and Link will drink it. And yeah, and they actually replenish eight hearts, unlike the red potion that replenishes six. So overall, this is a better potion. Now, uh, let's go ahead and talk to her and get things started. So, hey, you're looking real tough these days, boy. Uh, you look like you're not scared of anything. Yeah, I'm not. That's what I like to hear. I'll open the door to level 3 for you. But I'll be honest with you, the last stages were child's play compared to this one. Even I couldn't make it to the end. But I think you've got what it takes to do it. Are you ready to take them on, boy? Yes. Good answer. Which level do you want to try? What? I... Well, you were offering me three, but she's going to let us choose. Obviously, I do want to take on three, so playing once costs 50 rupees, okay? Yep, sounds good to me. All right, so you want the final door, level three? It's going to be tough, but I don't want to hear any whining from you. You're the one that's going to be whining when I beat this. <laughs> yeah, all right, here we go into the magical portal. So as you can tell, this episode is going to be action-packed with a bunch of, uh, you know, different enemies we're going to be taking on. But the commentary won't be so action-packed because, yeah, we are basically just going up against enemies and stuff. So there won't be anything interesting. So what I decided to do is decide to jot down some notes on... Uh, frequently asked questions throughout this let's play I'm gonna answer them and uh, yeah just throughout taking this on so we'll see how well we do that way I have something to talk about instead of like fast forwarding or anything because this is a let's play and I like to talk and show everything I could show within the game not really fast forward anything that doesn't need to be fast forward so yeah and I'm gonna take my time doing this by the way because like I said, we're going to take on every single boss one after another. It's like a boss gauntlet as well as a bunch of enemies. So I don't want to lose too many hearts. Um, so I'm going to try to play it careful and stuff. But yeah, the first question and definitely the most frequently asked question throughout this Let's Play is Spirit Tracks or Phantom Hourglass? Uh, which one do I prefer? Now, I've answered this a lot of times through comments, but I never actually said in the videos. Uh, at least I believe I haven't. But it would be Spirit Tracks. Now, it's not just because I'm playing it right now or anything like that. It's, uh, there's a lot of reasons to it. Now, I obviously did play Phantom Hourglass on release, and I actually loved it. When Spirit Tracks came out, I was a little upset that they kept the touchscreen mechanic, and I thought it wasn't going to hold up to Phantom Hourglass's gameplay. But it was almost exactly the same. Actually, I didn't really feel any, like, uh changes like usually when you get a sequel to a game like a direct sequel like this you'd assume that they'd have really similar mechanics because it'd be on the same engine but uh, a lot of small enhancements and things and i think the most they like fixed within this game is the rolling instead of like doing a weird squiggle at the edge of your screen you double tap and actually i don't even like that i prefer doing the small little squiggle at the end of the screen because sometimes you can confuse rolling with uh, trying to attack an enemy like tapping on them and Link will end up rolling and it's a little annoying but still th that's not the reason <laughs> why I like this game more no because obviously that Phantom Hourglass wins that part um, what I really like about this game is the fact that it's on land and I love Hyrule and Hyrule is amazing and Phantom Hourglass isn't in Hyrule, it's actually in a completely different world besides Link and Zelda and all of their worlds and stuff. They're actually somewhere else. They enter the Ocean King's realm somehow. And in reality, in like their world, they were only gone for five to ten minutes if you saw the ending cutscene of Phantom Hourglass. Unlike, uh, you know, so it wasn't really like, it didn't feel canon, uh, even though it clearly did happen. But, um... 
because really how you can look at this timeline wise you can see like the events of um Wind Waker and jump straight to Phantom Hourglass or to rather uh, Spirit Tracks because Phantom Hourglass's events didn't affect the timeline in any sort of way. Way they just went sailing for a bit. The Phantom Hourglass events happened, nothing new, and then Spirit Tracks happened. The only thing we do know is Lineback was a thing one time, and that's it. And even Lineback the Third didn't like see you as anything because he's his grandson of the linebacker we knew in Phantom Hourglass. So yeah, as for story-wise, this definitely holds a much uh, more important story, I guess you could say. But that's obviously not the reason either. Uh, a huge factor into why I like this game, obviously, is because it's on land. And um, I love the traveling in this game a lot more. In uh, Phantom Hourglass, the traveling was a lot easier later on into the game because you'd actually be able to warp from like halfway into the game once you get the cyclone st slate thing. But that's the thing, this game is, this and Phantom Hourglass's main mechanic is traveling. So when traveling isn't as important in the game, it's just, it kind of defeats the purpose. Like I'd rather sit and go through tedious traveling and enjoy my surroundings. Unlike in Phantom Hourglass where you just have the sea around you and it's, really boring to travel um in this game regardless even though you have to travel a crap ton everywhere it's still generally a lot of fun and yeah i personally enjoy it. as if you saw like i traveled a lot in this let's play uh most of it i did not even show so all of the traveling you've seen me do um was just important things and there's a lot of you know things i had to cut because how long it would have taken me to actually do it um so yeah <laughs> It's crazy how, like, ridiculous this game is with traveling, but that's what I like about it. That and Wind Waker, these two games share really similar, like, traveling ways to it, like... And that's what I like, there's a lot of traveling to it, and you're kind of forced to travel throughout the game. I, I mean, though in Wind Waker, you make it to a point where you don't have to travel nearly as much. Um, but, oh jeez, I didn't mean to get hit. And you also get stunned if you get hit, by the way, so they, you can set him up for another attack. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, so basically a huge factor is the traveling. You can also get these guys to hit each other, I believe. Yeah, there you go. And they do a crap ton of damage to each other, so you kind of want to do that. Um, uh, but back to what I was saying. That and generally the story for this one is a lot better uh, because, you know, it kind of connects to a timeline. Um, <clears throat> I'm losing my train of thought here. It's kind of hard to like play and really get give this game like a review I guess you could say because I definitely want to go in depth crap um, But another reason why I really like this game is the fact that it has a musical instrument I think Zelda really needs that and the spirit flute is really nice and definitely adds to the game that and Zelda is a main factor in it unlike Tetra you see her in the beginning of the game, then she completely disappears until the very end. And to me, that's a little sad. There is no saving the princess, nor does she even act like Zelda. They do call her in the beginning, like they reference her as Zelda, like the pirates. But other than that, that's it. So it's kind of sad that uh, we didn't really get much of the Wind Waker elements, nor the Wind Waker itself. So I was really hoping the game would have had Wind Waker elements. If it did, maybe I would have liked Phantom Hourglass more than Spirit Tracks, but... Uh, this game, you know, was kind of similar to uh, to the other Zelda games in a way. It kind of, you know, took the whole Zelda tradition, and that's why I liked it more, especially with the kingdom. Zelda games need kingdoms, and yeah, so. Right, so they should all hit each other right here. Come on, hit, hit the other ones, buddy. But, yeah, so th those are a couple of reasons. Honestly, I, I wish I could go more in depth, but like I said, uh, kind of hard to focus. But let's go ahead and jump into a different question that's uh, asked a lot. And what is my favorite uh, between the like adult era, which is Phantom Hourglass, Wind Waker, and Spirit Tracks? So you obviously know I like Spirit Tracks more than Phantom Hourglass, but do I like Wind Waker or Phantom Hourglass or rather Spirit Tracks more? Well, that's obviously Wind Waker, but that's mainly just because it's a home console game. Um, and the traveling is just as fun in that game as it is in this one. I mean... I, like I said, I do prefer traveling on land over a ship or a boat, but with uh, Wind Waker, there was just a lot more to the game, <clears throat> and it had Ganon in it, so 
Obviously, that's a plus. <laughs> and I'm not even kidding. Ganon plays a... I really like Zelda games with Ganon in it, because it's Ganondorf, you know? <laughs> but yeah. So that's another reason. Um, and I think that's honestly... It's just a home console. It's a lot more nostalgic to me. And uh, I don't know. It's just my favorite in the adult timeline era. Uh, era, rather. <laughs> but uh, my favorite Zelda game of all time is actually Twilight Princess. That's definitely my most asked question on any series, on anything. It's Twilight Princess, for those of you who don't know. Twilight Princess holds a really special spot in my heart because I played it a lot during its release. I played it a lot in like a really bad part of my life. Like when, not necessarily bad, like, but just a, a time where I wasn't really feeling too great. It was a game that like, just, like had time fly by and it was just so fun. And I know the game really well. I, I, as those of you don't know, I actually let's play the game twice. Uh, you can't see my first LP of it because it was so bad. But um, the second time I did it, I didn't even practice. I literally just did it from what I remembered by heart. And I was able to 100% it so easily. So, yeah. And that was like, what, a year after not playing it. Or like two years. I don't really remember when the first time I did it. But I played it that many times to where I know the game that well. So, yeah. Um, and it's definitely a game I would love to bring back to my channel because how much I love it. I can just, like, play it on and on. A lot of people ask me to do three heart runs of Twilight Princess. Definitely a thing I might consider. Uh, but I don't know. I just, I want to do other Zelda games. And that's another frequently asked question. What Zelda game are you going to do after this one? Uh, it's going to be a Zelda game. I'll tell you that. I don't want to spoil it, but it's... Don't worry, I'm going to do another Zelda game after this one, so you guys don't have to worry, because I get asked that a lot. Like, are you gonna, what are you going to do next? Well, it's a Zelda game, so you guys don't have to worry about what exactly it's going to be. I can assure you it's going to be Zelda-related, also. Yeah, because I'll always be doing a Zelda project on my channel. That's, like, pretty much something I always want to do, uh, because I am Zelda Master, and it just makes sense, and I love Zelda so much that I come Kind of the reason why I started YouTube to like help people in games and Zelda was one of the games. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, don't hit me. <clears throat> Alright, so another, I kind of like just put down some notes uh, just to, uh, are you serious? This guy's really hard to get. Alright, okay, uh, this is getting annoying. Alright, jump back in. See if we can find him. Jump back in as well. Alright, gotcha. Um, but yeah, I, put, I like jotted down notes on the screen or something so I can uh, look, look at them, and I don't forget what I want to talk. Okay, so we went next Zelda. Okay, how long is this game after Phantom Hourglass? That's definitely a frequently asked question as well. I get that asked so much because people are always like, "Wait a second, this is a hundred years after Phantom Hourglass. How come Link looks so young?" Also, this is like the biggest freaking dick move. I don't know why the screen flashes like that. It's like a glitch or something, but they basically deny you from using any other item in this battle, um, which is just great. You have to bait these guys into those electric spike thingies and then kill them like that. So yeah, so this one's a little difficult to get done, but you can kill them in like a hit or two with your locomotive sort of epicness. All right, let's see if we can get this guy here. He's going in. No, he did not. Oh, also they take a full heart. So you don't want to get hit by them. But yeah, okay. So let's see if we can get this guy in this one. You need to focus a little here. Usually I want just to talk about things. But yeah, so a question I always get asked is, uh, where does this game, the game take place after, after Phantom Hourglass? And I actually said it in the first episode of this Let's Play. So... It surprises me that people still ask that question. But this is a hundred years after, and this is not the same Link, of course. This is a different Link. Now, people ask, oh, okay, is this a, like, the son of Zelda and Link? No, because if you saw, <clears throat> the first time you see Zelda, you actually see a stained glass of um, Tetra. And to me, that just says, oh, okay, so, you know, when they found this new land, which is, you know, New Hyrule, the land that we're currently on here in Spirit Tracks, um, right after the events of Phantom Hourglass, they started a new Hyrule, and Zelda was obviously the princess, um, which makes sense and all. And her grandchild, because if you didn't know, uh, in one of the cutscenes, even Angine literally states that she was friends with Tetra, 
when they first found this land. Um, yeah, her grandchild is, you know, the Princess Zelda that we have on our adventure. So, basically, also, you want to hit these guys. Ah, oh, jeez. This is definitely the most, oh my god, the most annoying room out of them all. It's the final uh, enemy kind of room. If I can just do this without losing too many hearts, god dang it. All right. If I could do this without losing too many hearts, we'll be swell. I just need to kill him in one hit like this. I need him to be facing at me. Come on. Okay, never mind. Sometimes they don't die in one hit. All right, I think it'd be safer to actually stand against the wall. Are you serious? <sighs> All right. Should be really careful. Okay. Look this way. Block with your shield. But yeah, um... So, Angie knew who, you know, Zelda was when they first found this land, and what the frick. Are you kidding me? Okay, I'm screwing up a lot. I didn't want it. This is the one room I hate, man. It's the one room I freaking hate. Okay, now I'm just hurting myself at this point. Really? Oh my god. Okay, wait. I just can't finish this room. I really... <sighs> Freaking ice physics and freaking so bullcrap. And let's just see if I could kill him with my bow. Nope. They also slide around. Great. Glad this guy's coming straight towards me. There we go. There we go. Great. Ah. Um. <laughs> but yeah, I'll I'll get into what I was saying in a second. Okay, your sword does almost no damage. Throw this one. Let's go to move around. Oh. Okay. Like that. How did that guy die in one hit when he still had spikes? See, it doesn't make much sense at times. I'm trying to look at the top screen to get a sense of what's going on here. But that's not working. I'm going to use all my bombs here as well. Like, I think I have to if I want to do this without using a potion. So, yeah. But yeah, I really want to not use a potion and because like, we still have to take on every single boss in this area. So right, let's go ahead and hit this guy like this. Uh, we are almost done with this room. There we go. I don't know. These are definitely the worst enemies in the game. I'll tell you that much. Especially because you only fight them on ice. I think... I think they can't even not be on ice because they want to slide. Actually, they'd still slide like this if they weren't on ice because they're technically iceified. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, okay, one more. But, yeah, okay. So, <laughs> to what I was saying. So, yeah, uh, Anjean and Tetro were friends. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so, Zelda is... I guess maybe Link and Zelda's grandson, like Tetra, aka Zelda, is grandson from Phantom Hourglass, because I don't know if Link and Zelda hooked up, but they could have. But the Link we're currently playing as is just some kind of reincarnation of Link, like some descendant of the hero. Uh, he is not really special. Actually, there is no connection with him and the Triforce of Courage either. Uh, it's literally just some new hero that comes. So. It's just some kind of reincarnation, I guess you could say. There's really no Link w besides that. And I don't think Nintendo really states. They obviously say this is Link, but yeah. The, the fact that he knows Nico, though, um, I do not know. I guess he just happened to live with Nico. You know, some random kid maybe lost his parents or something, and Nico picked him up and they started living together. But I don't think Link personally has any connection with royalty and Link and Zelda from Hyrule. I mean, there might be, or maybe Zelda never hooked up with Link and she started the whole royal family of the new Zelda on her own. And that this is Link's like grandchild years after. And yeah, something like that. But in general, you're just an engineer who becomes a hero. That's, that's the reality of things. That's what happens. But yeah, that one room I think we spent like five minutes on. The one with the uh, ice choo-choo things. Or rather, uh, what are they called? I already forgot the name for them. Octoroks. Are they Octo- Octos. Whatever, who cares. That one room definitely took a bunch of hearts from us and 
time, and so that sucks. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the, like, kind of the whole thing. Obviously, there are theories to what this Link really is, but regardless, he most likely is not, like, has nothing to do with, like, Tetra, at least. Like, he's not related to her. Um, as for my favorite boss, because I get asked that as well, and since we've taken on all of the bosses, I feel like it'd be necessary to, to bring that up, as well as we're going to be taking all of the bosses in this episode. Uh, my favorite one is... Wait one second. Gotta make sure I blow this on time. <laughs> but, yeah, basically my favorite boss is Kragma, the Lava Lord. And I was supposed to kill him there, but I guess I didn't get a chance, sadly. But he's definitely my favorite just because he is the biggest out of all of them. And for those of you who don't know, I really like big, badass bosses. I kind of like humanoid bosses, but I don't know. In Zelda games, not really. Um, but yeah, I think he's really cool. I love the battle with him, you know, the the phase of going on the minecart and hitting him with your bow. And in general, that's like a really cool concept. Um... My least favorite boss, though, has to be Burn, which is the only humanoid boss. Um, and the reason why is because he's ridiculously easy. I love the character, though. He's, like, one of the coolest and most badass Zelda characters. He's just, yeah, really easy. So it kind of let me down a lot when fighting him for the first time. As you saw, I think I only got hit by him once when we fought him. And we're not going to be fighting him, by the way, in this, because he was technically like a mini-boss. We're only fighting temple bosses, as you can tell. So just one after another. This is one crazy boss gauntlet. Um, but yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much, you know, why I don't really like uh, Burn that much. Uh, so another question is... Uh, my thoughts on Zelda in this game, because in this this is like the only Zelda game where Zelda is actually extremely useful and plays a really important part within the game. Uh, that's the main reason why I actually really like this game a lot. Uh, because, yeah, Zelda is useful. I actually really like how Nintendo did that. I think they should really have another Zelda game where your companion plays a big part instead of just having Link. Because with Zelda turning into a phantom and all, I think that's really interesting. I mean, sadly, she doesn't do much out of the Tower of Spirits, as you can tell. You know, we've been fighting all of this and Zelda didn't even say a word. But, um, regardless, she is cool. So, yeah, I think that's really awesome about this. But let's go in and quickly run and do this. I need to, like, kill this guy without getting hit. He's, uh, not really that hard, honestly, but he's definitely one of the more annoying ones, uh, mainly because he has an ice move, and I just, you know, hate ice, so, oh, okay. Shoot a bunch of fire. Let's go ahead and do this. Yep, that cooled him down. Or rather, yeah, cooled him down. There we go. Back into this phase. <laughs> Yeah, th this is definitely not that hard. All of the bosses were easy. I'm telling you, the, the biggest trouble is the, like, easy enemies that you do to, uh, please tell me this reaches. Crap. All right, well, we could do this. There we go. We can just use that guy. Also, I was going to spit at him fire, so that wasn't even going to work, I think. So, they're shooting fire on fire. <laughs> Don't fight fire with fire, guys. I think that is actually a saying. Or fight fire with fire is actually a saying. I don't know. But yeah, um... So, I know, let's see if I had anything else. Oh, if there were another... Oh, yeah. There's something I mentioned before, but if there was another Zelda game in this timeline, uh, what style would it be? I mean, let's say there's another adult era game with Toon Link as the protagonist, of course. I think it would be in the sky with hot air balloons. That would be the traveling method because throughout all of the adult era, there has been a traveling system. <laughs> and we had two at sea, one on land, so it only makes sense to have one in the air. That's something I personally would want. I don't think Nintendo will do it. They seem to be straying away from Toon Link. I mean, they did remake Wind Waker HD, and since because of that, they put him in Smash Bros. But other than that, I don't think they were really going to mention him. 
um, which is kind of sad because I like both links. I don't favor one over the other. I guess I would say my favorite link is from Twilight Princess. But that's just because it's my favorite game. Um, but other than, other than that, I want like different kind of Zelda games and I don't want them all to be the same style and they always change the style. It's not like a Mario game where Mario is always the same uh, or something. They always change Link his style and always have a different theme to the game with its own kind of graphics and I like that. I hope they keep the toony type graphics with uh, these games. Okay, let's quickly hit this. Oh, jump! Okay. Yeah, I hope they keep the Toonie style graphics with the handhelds. I just want all of the handhelds to... Oh, no! Come on. I want all of the handhelds to be uh, Toon Link type games. And then all the home consoles to be more realistic, I guess. Or not even realistic. Maybe just like Scattered Sword or Twilight Princess. Any type of style, just not Toon Link style. Uh, like more adult link, you know, type of style instead of this. Um, and I think that'd be a nice mix in between, but uh, at the same time, I would love remakes and, you know, another game like A Link Between Worlds on handheld. So, you know, I honestly want anything because there are so many kind of links. Uh, I would just like to see a sequel to Spirit Tracks that follows the adult era timeline. So, yeah. For those of you who don't know what the adult era timeline is, it's after Ocarina of Time when Link stays as an adult, unlike he stays as a kid. The timeline splits into three, of course, for those who don't know. One is uh, the adult era, of course, that we are playing, and then one is the child era, which goes from Majora's Mask to Twilight Princess. Um, and then there is the hero actually gets defeated, and that is the kind of like the fallen hero era and that is definitely the one that makes the least sense um, because I think they sh you know when they were working on the official timeline they wanted a game or they wanted like a different timeline to put in the other games like Zelda 1, Zelda 2, uh, A Link Between Worlds, A Link to the Past, all of those because those didn't fit in the timeline really. They had like their own thing, so they made a third timeline split, and that was the uh, the fallen hero timeline, and that's definitely the one that makes the least sense, and that's the one uh, that has my I won't I don't want to say least favorite Zelda games, but my least played Zelda games um, because yeah, I think that one was definitely the least thought of, <laughs> but yeah. Still, that's, you know, another timeline split. So if Link does fail, even though it doesn't make sense because it's a hero of time, he's supposed to succeed. So, like I said, I feel like they just found a way to implement another timeline and that's how they did it. Okay, so we died for the first time. Don't worry, guys. We do have the purple potion. It's going to heal one row. If we drink another one, we'll have full HP, but I'd rather wait until we actually fall um, and die. But there we go. All right, so hopefully we kill him here. Yep, we did. Okay, so that's three bosses down. Two more to go, or three more. <gasps> what does that mean? Well, you'll see soon. As soon as we defeat that uh, Kragma and freaking the ancient demon skeleton thing. I, I think I said Demon Lord when I first fought the one for the Sand Temple. A lot of people were like, oh, it's a freak. You, you can't read. You don't know. It's like, no, I just didn't look at it. And I saw a demon or something, and I just kind of improv from there. Uh, sometimes I just don't pay attention to the screen, and I just glance at it, and I just say whatever. So I apologize that I got the title of the boss wrong, but this is the Lava Lord, so, you know, I didn't get that one wrong. We'll get it right next time we see the next boss. But there we go, my favorite boss, the Lava Lord, Kragma. He is just pretty badass. Um, I'll tell you that much, so I don't think the uh, bow of light does anything effective, really. It's the same. So this is a safe zone. If you just stand here, you won't get hit. But you do have to leave this area um, to have a rock fall, one of the big boulders. Once they do... Oh, quickly run. Once they do fall, you're going to have to have him crush it, and then we can start beating him up. Okay, so there it is. Let's get him charging it. And we can get moving the second he starts charging. He won't switch his position the second he, you know, like, winds up his arm. And from there, we can easily throw it. And here we go. All right, so I never really show... Oops. 
expect me to fall. What the frick? Can't get a good angle because the freaking camera changed. All right. So I never showed what happened when he actually grabs you. I don't think I ever mentioned it. But if you don't hit all of his glowy spots as soon as you possibly can, he'll actually grab you from the minecart and throw you down. Luckily, the platform stays there so you can easily jump back on the minecart. But I, I mean, I wouldn't really want that to happen. I don't know who would. So, yeah, you just don't want that to happen. Um, but, yeah, let's go ahead and hit him straight into the eye. Oh. Okay, well, he has another hand going to block. Now, there we go. Going to beat him up in the head. But, yeah, I really like this boss fight just because it's all crazy and uh, he's a ginormous guy. Uh, really, I don't know, I always fall for the fire type demon bosses that you fight in Zelda games like most of them like Volvagia in uh, um, freaking Ocarina of Time is my absolute favorite uh, I forgot the boss's name in Twilight Princess but it was definitely the fire one which is kind of sad because that's my favorite game but I did forget the name of the boss it was, it was just basically a possessed Twilight Goron I think it was called uh, Firus or something. Yeah, I believe it was called Firus. He was super badass. He's definitely my favorite in the game. And hello, can you... Oh, I forgot to hit this. Ah, I'm so dumb. Playing so badly. This isn't a time where I'm not supposed to screw up. Okay. Please wind up again. I need to hit him there. Yeah, I'm playing like an idiot. Okay, there we go. Now, the part will fall. I don't know why they forced you to do that. Why can't it just fall down from the beginning? You know? Just stupid. Alright, there we go. So go ahead and wind up. Please. I'm waiting for you. Okay, there we go. Go, go, go. Alright, let's pick it up. Somehow he was able to break it like that. And as long as we don't fall here, the camera angle won't ruin its position. And we'll be able to jump right on the minecart without losing any more hearts because we lost quite a bit of hearts here. Literally, that one room screwed me up so hard. Ah. We do have one more potion, though. I just don't want to, like, fail on this, because I can see myself just getting cursed and failing. Um, but, yeah, okay, so. Hit that. Start heading up, please. Uh, oh, there we go. That's cool. We are supposed to hit this one, and it took forever to actually show it to us, or for us to get a chance. But, yeah, there we go. Now we're going to head up. Hit that one. One over there, if you let me. There we go. His hands. Show me your hands. Or can we hit the eye? Right. Right. Come on. There we go. Alright. Took a bit. I just don't want to screw this up, man. I just don't. <laughs> you don't want to do this in one go. Normally, I don't struggle on any boss fights. This is meant to be hard, though. Like, they filled it with enemies. So you can have, like, one crazy boss gauntlet. And I think it would have been a lot better if it was just a boss gauntlet with only bosses instead of a bunch of annoying enemies in between. But then it would have been way too easy. So, yeah. But it would have been a lot more fun regardless. I would have preferred it with just bosses. I don't like fighting most of the enemies we had to take on in the earlier rooms. Especially since I only lost one heart or, like, two in all of the rooms but one. So, yeah, I'm still... Pretty upset over what happened um, in the very uh, last room before the bosses. So, yeah, I'm not gonna stop whining about that. Anyways, here we're gonna fight. <clears throat> I think his name is Staldrich. I already forgot. Staldrich. Staldrich, the ancient demon. That's it, ancient demon, not demon lord. My bad, because demon lord is Girahim's. Title, so I guess I can understand why some people got upset. Maybe. I don't know. Right, go ahead and do that. Let's move this here. Run to the other side and hit it! Okay, that was close. We was about to shoot another one right at it. want to get done with this guy as soon as possible as well because I don't really enjoy him. He's definitely not one of the funnest ones. Alright, move this one. There we go. And block it again. So, he, look at that. Yes, guys, we have three boulders we can use as ammo, uh, which is going to be awesome. And maybe four if he'll shoot. Okay, he won't. But let's go ahead and... Ah! Let's do that. Move a little bit. 
All right, so it's lagging because we're getting more boulders here, but if I can get this one to go here, if I can hit it, can hit it, hit it. All right, I got hurt there, but it was worth it because I was able to keep the elder boulders up and not get hit by his weird laser. But now what I want to do is since I do have another one set, where is it? There it is. I'm gonna turn around like this. Quickly dodge these ones. All right, now grab out the arrows. Charge it up. Bam. Wait, really? Oh, really, dude? <laughs> okay, let's not have more than one boulder out. I don't think that's what they want you to do. So let's stand right under him so we don't get hurt. Put this one right here. Oh, wait, it's not even set in. Oh! Run, run, run! Shooting him. Okay, set this one. Come on, hurry up. Move it! What the frick? Oh, crap. All right. All right, we're good. <sighs> now we just have to hit this one when he starts to look at us like that. Bam, baby. And the other one will be right behind him. So that's not gonna be hard to do either. Focusing here to get this done with. Woo! Wait, one more. <laughs> That's a good thing about saving a couple of them. You can easily just stack them up and quickly get done. Alright, so this is going to be the hardest one, of course, because he's going to shoot like five of them rapid speed. And, yeah, okay. But, look at that. We already have it set. This one's a little bit tilted, I believe. He also can shoot a lot lower now, as you can tell. Uh, because he is all right can I shoot it oh crap no okay keep running that's where it is come on yes glad I'm done with this guy I like you stealth rich but I don't know you're too time-consuming Definitely the longest boss. Makes sense, though, because he's the final dungeon boss. So, yeah. This is the easy part. This is just when he's like, I don't know what to do. I need to, like, attack you somehow. So I'm going to chomp the away on the sand. Uh, my buddy, that doesn't really work. Are you serious? He's actually unable to hit him here. Oh, come on. Am I hitting him? Huh. I didn't even know I was hitting him there, but I guess I was. Oh, seriously? being really dumb there we go all right we're done right we took on all of the bosses everything piece by piece this is it but should it be obvious by now what it is i think i already hinted to it uh, maybe even in the thumbnail of the video because this is definitely the most badass secret to it and that is well in this room we're gonna find one more guy there's obviously a chest that will reward us with whatever this is this is like the prize are you serious we didn't do all this for that no there's something more let's go in and head down and uh we can't use anything as you can tell only our uh, spirit flute which doesn't mean anything luckily we do get to replenish our hearts so that is freaking awesome but right up ahead is Darkling, yes! Us. So, basically, this battle is so cool. How this works is he'll fight like you. Um, as you can tell, this is the rolling mechanic I was talking about. I was uh, trying to jump attack on him, but I wasn't able to. So if you try to fight him head on, he will uh, block like literally every single one of your attacks. What you need to do is you need to get him to... Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. What you need to do is you need to get him to like run at you like this. And sometimes he just, oh crap, he's doing this great spin. Um, to run at you and or charge up like arrows or anything. And usually you get a free window to attack. So it's like, yeah, like that. See? Well, we didn't really get a chance there. But yeah, that's basically what you want to do when he attacks like that. Here I am just screwing it up though. There we go. We were able to get a hit. And as you further do damage to him, it'll start, the opacity will uh, decrease on him. 
and you'll start to notice that he's getting damaged. But see, there we go. We were able to get another hit. He honestly doesn't have that much HP. He's really easy to take on. Uh, also, he doesn't do that much damage either. Uh, so this is like an, kind of an even battle, honestly. But we're obviously going to live because we are the real hero. Uh, I think it's really cool how they incorporated a Dark Link battle, especially since there hasn't been any Dark Link battles besides the one in Ocarina of Time. Actually, the Zelda 2 also had one. I think that's honestly it. I mean, there was an appearance of Dark Link in Twilight Princess, but sadly, we did not fight him. We just saw him in, like, a weird vision of Link um, as he, like, saw what happens when people obtain power. I think it was pretty interesting. But another thing you can do actually is this, uh, the great spin attack and hit him easily if you get a chance to get his back. But there we go. We defeated him in a one-on-one -on -one duel. We're going to get a better piece of treasure, I believe, as soon as we exit this. But yeah, that does it. Okay, so that was not that difficult. As you can tell, I was really trying to lead up to this moment and have, a you know, at least a bottle on me and a bunch of hearts because I thought it was going to be harder than this, but it wasn't. So you mean you cleared out... Level 3, 2? Even I couldn't do that, and I made the place. Just so you know, the time for this level was, oh my god, almost 40 minutes. That is ridiculous. Here's your prize uh, this time. I hope you like it. And it's just an ancient gold coin. Yes, all of that for this. So, was it worth it? I don't know. You tell me. But thanks for watching, everybody. And, well, in the next episode, before I end off, I would like to show you guys where we're going to be heading to. We're going to be taking on pretty much the final side quest within the game. This is going to give us much more than just a piece of treasure, so don't worry. Uh, yeah, it's a lot more worth it. Basically, where I'm going to be heading to is a station we haven't yet stopped by. The one station we need to discover, and it's all the way over here it lies right there never really got a chance to show it off i passed by it i mentioned it but i purposely ignored it until now i'll get into further detail why i ignored it and what it is and what we're going to be doing in the next episode so thanks for all all, all of you guys for watching this episode in the next episode we're going to be heading to this exact spot. I'm actually gonna quickly mark it on my map so you guys know exactly where I'm heading to. Because if you've been following along this playthrough, you might not know exactly where the station is, but it's over there. So we'll meet you guys there. Thanks again for watching. I've been Zelda Master, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye! Mm -hmm.